Welcome to the Better Off Bonus Call of the Week. We're sponsored by Betterment, the smarter way to invest your money. Now, remember, this is the extra episode where you get to ask me a financial question, anything that's on your mind. And it can be about your investments. It can be about your retirement, your estate planning, you're selling a house, what you think you ought to do, anything that's out there. If I don't know the answer, well, I'll find out where I can get the answer and get back to you. But you have two chances to get on the air every single week. Today's episode on Tuesday, the bonus call of the week, and then on the longer show on Thursdays. But you've got to let us know who you are and whether you want to be on the show, just send us an email. Ask Jill at betteroffpodcast.com. That's what Mike from Tennessee did. Hi, Mike. Welcome to Better Off. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. How about yourself? I'm fantastic. How can I help you today? Yes, um, I have a retirement question. Um, I'm currently 49 years old. My wife is as well. We don't have any children. And I was on track to try to early retire, and I was trying to do so uh, fairly comfortably. Um, but recently I went and had what's called a coronary calcium score, which mm. basically is a rough indicator of how much plaque you have in your coronary arteries. I, I did this because my dad, dad died of a heart attack when he was 59 years old. Right. So that's why I've been on track to try to early retire because I didn't want to you know, go down that path. Uh, so the calcium score did not come back very good for my age group, uh, bottom 8 percentile um, as far as uh, predictability of coronary calcium. So uh, so that's not good. That puts me in a high-risk group. So uh, considering maybe making some lifestyle changes earlier than I was going to in ways of retirement, I did make the lifestyle changes in the way of diet and exercise and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Recently, so I just uh, uh, want to give you my current situation and uh, see uh, see what your thoughts are on you know retiring you know within the next year as opposed to the next three to four years. Which okay, was the original plan. So. so let me just ask you a question. So you're 49 now. You are asymptomatic, except for this bad this bad report. You are feeling well today, correct? Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, my blood pressure's always been normal. I've always exercised my whole life. I do eat too much, so I'm a little bit overweight, so I'm working on that. Uh, no smoking, any of that, no, and totally asymptomatic. Okay, so, uh, good. Well, that's the most important thing, so let's see, figure out how we can get you retired at uh, by age 50, for goodness sakes. So tell yep. me more about yourself. Uh, how much money have you and your wife saved? Uh, currently, we have $1.9 million. Fantastic. Um, Congratulations. Well done. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, and uh, so that's that's where we're at. There, six hundred thousand is in uh, tax deferred accounts, and uh, the one point three is in taxable accounts. Okay. Um, and uh, I own uh, a couple homes, uh, one here in Tennessee. Uh, we also own one in Florida. Um, we have no debt, so we don't owe any money on anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and I uh, also have a uh, commercial piece of property that I get a triple net lease on for at least the next five to ten years. It's open-ended depending on when the you know, uh, current uh, tenants decide not to lease it anymore. So mm-hmm. I get 5000 a month for that. Um, Good. And uh, that's uh, the, the one big variable, which I don't know about. Uh, we have worked out a uh, uh, retirement budget, um, including taxes of about 120000 a year. We thought we could re- retire comfortably, very comfortably. And um, so the thought was to sell the house here in Tennessee, move to Florida, our Florida home, um, mm-hmm. take the value of the house in Tennessee and, and put it into our portfolio. How much would that be? Uh, roughly uh, seven hundred thousand, uh, probably a six hundred net of uh, of fees and, and taxes for selling the home. So okay. another six hundred thousand. That's great. Another, That's great. Uh, and and the plate when you said your retirement need of one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, does that presume you owned both houses or that you were just living in Florida? Just living in Florida. Okay, got it. Okay, so so now we're talking instead of one point nine, you're talking about two and a half million bucks. That looks like is sort of your your nest egg, correct? That is correct. Other than the commercial property, is there any other income that you can re- count on in your retirement? Uh, no, other than the commercial property, um, I do have a profession that I could work part-time if I choose to, and mm-hmm. I may choose to after I've you know had a year of downtime or something like that. So, right. So I do have that option. That is, that I can work pretty much uh, uh, at will and uh, any place I want to. So that's that's a, that's a bonus. But uh, other than Social Security, there won't be any, any sort of other income. I mean, of course, we've got to think about this in terms of 
you know, for sort of pre-Social Security and post-Social Security. It's so it's strange to talk to someone at age 50. You know, I, I, I applaud that you're doing all this planning. But, you know, because you're so healthy as we speak and I'm hearing you tell your story, it's strange to think about retirement. I'm going to guess, and I don't know this at all, but I'm going to guess that once you get to Florida, you'll do something. But I'm not going to presume that you will. I'm just saying I'm going to guess you will. Because it's hard to, at 50, just be like, I'm done. You know, you'll end up doing something, I guess. Uh, what do you do now that helped you save all this money? I basically, as a business owner, mm-hmm. and I uh, sold the business uh, about a year and a half ago. I still work there. I still sold it to a corporate buyer, so I still am employed by them, mm-hmm. and I still work in the business. So I, I, I sold the business. But prior to that, we had, you know, there were, of course, the uh, deferred uh, retirement accounts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I poured a lot back into the business with this being the end goal. So right. That's what I did. So, you know, it's interesting. So it's funny. You have like, you have a flip flop situation that serves you incredibly well. And what I mean by that is that most people who you'll hear me talk to will have much more money set aside in retirement accounts than non retirement accounts. You're flipped. You're the other way. You're going to end up having 1.9 million in taxable accounts and then the 600 grand in retirement accounts. And that is what is the important secret sauce of making this work. And I think you are going to be able to make it work because what's going to happen is out of that 1.9 million, you're going to use that money to essentially offset the the money that you need in retirement, right? So you'll have, say, 60 grand from your commercial property, and then you're going to need, like you said, another 60 grand or so, right, from, from that port, from your taxable account, which you can pull. The one thing that's going to make or break this plan is your ability to really stick to that 120 grand a year. Because if in one year you're like, well, you know what, I'm still healthy and I just want to go around the world and spend 200 grand this year instead of 120, that could really screw you over. I think based on the numbers, if I do a quick back of the envelope calculation, I think you're going to be okay. It works better if you certainly make some money. You're right on the edge here just because of the fact that you're so young. And so while, you know, if you said to me, oh, I know exactly the date I'm going to die. Now do the planning. That's easy for me. But I'm hopeful that you're going to live decades into the future. And so we cannot presume that you can blow through all of your money. And also you've got a wife who I think it sounds like doesn't necessarily have the same health issues and is also young. So we have to make sure this two and a half million bucks lasts. And the way you do that is to really keep a tight grip on the retirement need, the expenses side of it. And if possible, a little bit, even just, I mean, honestly, even if it were like a couple grand a month or a thousand dollars a month, anything that you can earn that would help you reduce the amount of money you pull from that taxable account is going to help you long term. But I think it sounds like you're actually pretty much on on target here. But I guess the only unknown is the commercial property part of it. But, you know, if, if it's creating a cash flow of five grand a month, chances are it's worth something, too. How much do you think that your share of this commercial property is worth? The rent is much more than the value of the property and probably in the neighborhood of two hundred fifty to 300000 Okay. And those, certainly we could sell that at the end of the uh, lease or we will be selling that at the end of the lease. Okay. Well, I mean, look, again, I think the game plan sounds pretty good. You cannot take too much money out early on. That's going to be your critical issue. You're going to have to be very careful about not blowing through that taxable account too quickly. But otherwise, I think it sounds like a very good plan. And, you know, like I said, if uh, you and your wife make a few shekels on the side, that's good news because it's money you don't have to pull from the portfolio. How does it sound to you? You feeling okay about it? Yeah, I feel okay. It's just a little tentative because I, you know, I, I do like to have a little bit of a cushion there, which is why I was planning on working 53 to 54. But uh, if I do that for another couple of years, because it was a high-stress job, if I do that a couple of years, then then uh, may not have to worry about the retirement account. It's a very funny thing. You can really reduce your retirement stress simply by dying. It's really, But that doesn't yeah, sound yeah. like a good outcome, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't so. it to me either. Look, I think if you can... Uh, even if you did something completely different, you know, if you do, if you pull back and you don't have to have something stressful, you know, it, it was funny. I got a note from a guy who said to me you, that <laughs> I don't know why it just cracked me up because he moved to Florida and he was kind of bored. And he said uh, what he ended up doing was um, working at the driving range 
where he liked to hit balls and that he just thought it was fun. And like, he's like, you know what? It's like, I, I'm not, it's not, it's a mindless job. It's fine. And I just like to be out in the, the air and it's a few bucks and like, that's fine with me. And so maybe there's something like a low risk job. And maybe it's like, you know, you sound like a smart guy. Maybe it's like, you know what? I'm going to tutor some kids in the neighborhood because that's not a stressful job. Although, you know, kids can be stressful, but um, you know, whatever it is, I wouldn't shut the door on working. I, I would, I understand your whole point being, which is, if, if it's going to be stressful, you might as well stay where you are, and we really don't want that stress for you. Right, correct. All right, Mike, go forth. Tell me how hey. well you're doing. Give us a shout when you're in Florida so we can check up on you, okay? All righty, thank you so much. Take care. Okay, that's a wrap of our Better Off bonus question of the week. If you've got a question, it's simple. Send us an email at askjill at betteroffpodcast.com. We'll arrange to get you on. And don't forget, in just a couple of days, there's a brand new episode of the Better Off Podcast sponsored by Betterment. Talk to you then. Talk to you then.